Hello everyone, Stas is here, back with some more Metal Gear Solid. So in the previous stream we have defeated Hind D, went through the communications towers, and now we have next boss fight, the Sniper Wolf. So let's see how, how I'm gonna fare this, because Hind D didn't go too well. Hopefully it's going to be better this time. So, mission log. To stop the launch of the new type of nuclear warhead, Snake must use the detonation code emergency override key at the underground maintenance base up north, or destroy Metal Gear itself. Snake fights Liquid's hind D on the roof of the communications tower B and defeats it. Snake takes the elevator in Communications Tower B and uh, defeats the stealth camouflage soldiers and gets to the snowfield north of Communications Tower B. Snake heads for the entrance to the underground maintenance base north of the snowfield. So yeah, that, that's where we are, basically. I forgot how good those sums ups are. Here we are, here's the snowfield. We can actually find something interesting here. We can find parachute. Huh? Colonel, listen to me. I found a parachute near the wreckage of the hind. A parachute? You don't think that Liquid survived? Impossible. As soon as he jumped out of the pilot's seat, he'd be sliced up faster than an onion on an infomercial. So what's that parachute doing there, then? I have no idea. A trap. Either that, or a message. To me. Meaning I'm not dead, I suppose. Maybe. But I think it's more like I'll string you up. Well, in any case, don't let your guard down. I won't. I discovered the parachute the achievement. There are no streaks on me. <laughs> okay. Wonder how did he manage to like get out from this hel helicopter and parachute safely? It's kind of weird. Do we have any items this way? Don't remember. I bet we will have some desi palm around here, right? Do we need it for fight? Maybe it will appear when when we will start the actual fight. We have some kind of a line in here that separates us from something. Ouch. Right, Snake, no need to hide. Just sit there. It's Snake, fine. Are you okay? Otacon, were there any other stealth prototypes? No, there were only five. So, this isn't stealth camouflage then. What are you talking about? Someone's aiming at me, in the middle of this blizzard. It's her! Wolf? Sniper Wolf? Yes, it's her. It's definitely her. Otacon, you sound like you're happy. No, I'm not. So then what is it? Snake, please don't kill her. Are you insane? Please! She's a good person. You'd know that if you talked to her. Listen to me, kid. She's a merciless killer. I can see you perfectly from here. <laughs> I told you, I'd never quit the hunt. Now you're mine. Wolf, no, you can't. Don't get between a wolf and its prey. You're pretty good if you can hit me in this storm. You see, women naturally make better soldiers. Wolf, don't do this. Snake. I'm near. Can't you sense me near you? It's a mistake for a sniper to reveal our location. Is that right? Well, I'm going to send you a love letter, my dear. Do you know what that is? It's a bullet straight from my gun to your heart. 
Please, Wolf! Snake, no! Quiet! Don't get in our way. Now I'm gonna pay you back for Meryl. You men are so weak. You could never finish what you start. Miller, some help? According to the SWAT manual, the longest a shooter can stay adequately focused on his target is 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, the observer and the shooter change places. Sniping is usually a two-man job. But she's alone, right? It looks like your target is stationary. If you've had enough practice, it shouldn't be a difficult shot. Is he mocking me? I'm a bit shooter. The scope of a sniper rifle is extremely powerful. On the other hand, it's got a very narrow field of vision. If you're searching for your enemy's position, it'd be better to use your binoculars. That's actually a good advice. According to the SWAT man, yeah, yeah, that's long... repeats. Actually, I'm kind of curious what achievements we have here. Do you see it? I think there's something about Nikita missiles. A missile you defeat sniper wolf in the snowfield using only the Nikita launcher using no more than 50% of your missiles fuel. That could be hard actually. Why does it say 1 out of 1? I have not completed it. But I'm better defeat Sniper Wolf in the snowfield using only the PSG-1 without missing a single shot. No, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> not not this, this time, at least. Maybe I'll come back to this game and do some achievements later, it's I don't know. Wolf. You can only shoot at her with your PSG-1. That's not true. Snake, Wolf is hiding somewhere in that snowfield. We can field. use other weapons. First you'll have to find out where she is. She should come out of hiding briefly to shoot at you. Sniper Wolf. It is pretty unusual for a sniper to announce their presence before they shoot. She must have a real thing for you. Anyway, I do not think it is going to be as easy as before. Was it easy before? Get on your stomach. Fire from the prone position. It would be good if you had a tripod or something stable to balance your weapon on. If you do not have that, hold the weapon firmly under your armpit and keep it still with your chin. Line up your target in your scope's crosshairs. Most soldiers can hit a target at 300 meters. I have a friend who can hit one at 520 meters. Sniper, you must have nerves of steel and lots of patience. That's not Sometimes me. You have to sit in position for days, barely moving a muscle. The most important thing is to wait for your opportunity and then take it. A slight tremor in your hand can cause you to miss a target 60 meters away by a half a foot or more. Concentrate. Hold your breath and try to stop your hand from moving. The most important thing is to zero your rifle scope. If you do not zero your sight correctly, you will never be able to hit your target. Your sight might be slightly off, so it would be a good idea to try a test shot. If it is off, you will have to take some lead for that when you shoot. Don't worry. This was Sniper Wolf's rifle. Ah, in that case, you had better not mess with it. At a distance of 400 meters, a one degree difference in air temperature will take you about one centimeter off your target. Atmospheric pressure will affect your shot in the same way. That is why you have to aim differently depending on the conditions. 
She has a lot to say about sniping in here. Have you ever heard of the magnet? She keeps defender? going. Normally, a rifle bullet rotates and curves slightly to the right. That is called the Magnus effect. Think about Comrade Magnus when you are lining up your crosshairs. Get on your stomach. All right, she starts to repeat. She should come out of hiding briefly to shoot at you. She should come out of hiding briefly to shoot at you. Thanks, Campbell. Really appreciate it. Now, what the con maybe? Otacon, where can I find ammo for the PSG one? I I can't tell. Oh, you little shit. Traitor. Doesn't talk to us anymore. All right. I have a plan. Damn it! Where is she? She's moving. She's moving fast. I didn't expect this. But we don't have too much DS bomb. She's gonna be there forever. Oh, damn. <laughs> It's gonna be hard. I need to get dizzy pump somehow. I think she tricked me. I should run. Oh, crap. Yeah, she did. Damn it. It's the wrong way. No, it's not. I need dizzy pump. Real bad. Right, we don't have any. Will she shoot? She will. Now it's my turn. What the hell? It doesn't go too well for me. I've lost her already. Yep. Snake, damn it. Let's use the other bomb. Last one. Stinger, please aim. Keep I 
guess we don't need a sniper rifle. <laughs> Stinger is good enough <laughs> for this. Oh, we're done. Well, it was scuffed, but <laughs> a clear is a clear, as I say in during raids in the 14. Oh, we're even healed. We healed. We have a Russian here. Let's see if we can get some DSZ bomb or sniper bullets. We don't really need sniper rifle anymore, actually. There's no use for it. So, best cutscene of this game incoming. Waited for this moment. I am a sniper. Waiting is my job. Never moving a muscle. Concentrating. <laughs> I am long shot. You cannot save me. Please. Just finish me quick. I am a card. I have always dreamed of a peaceful place like this. A card? So that's why you're called Wolf. I was born on a battlefield. Raised on a battlefield. Gunfire, sirens, and screams. They were my lullabies. Hunted like dogs, day after day. Driven from our ragged shelters. That was my life. Each morning I'd wake up and find a few more of my family or friends dead beside me. I'd stare at the morning sun and pray to make it through the day. The governments of the world turned a blind eye to our misery. But then, he appeared. My hero. Saladin. He took me away from all that. Saladin? You mean Big Boss? I became a sniper, hidden, watching everything through a rifle's scope. Now I could see war, not from inside, but from the outside, as an observer. I watched the brutality, the stupidity of mankind through the scope of my rifle. I joined this group of revolutionaries to take my revenge on the world. But I have shamed myself and my people. I am no longer the wolf I was born to be. In the name of vengeance, I sold my body and my soul. Wolves are noble animals. They're not like dogs. In Yupik, the word for wolf is Keglinek, and the Aleuts revere them as honorable cousins. They call mercenaries like us dogs of war. It's true. We're all for sale at some price or another. But you're different. Untamed. Solitary. You're no dog. You're a wolf. Who are you? Are you Saladin? Wolf. You spared Meryl's life. She... she was never my real target. I, I don't kill for sport. Rest easy. You'll die as the proud wolf you are. 
finally understand. I wasn't waiting to kill people. I was waiting for someone to kill me. A man like you. You're a hero. Please. Set me free. Why? Why? I loved you. What is it? My gun. Give it to me. She's part of me. Everyone's here now. Oh, okay, hero. Set me free. Goodbye. Snake, you said that love could bloom on the battlefield. But I couldn't save her. What are you doing? Returning it to its owner. I don't need a handkerchief. Why? I don't have any more tears to shed. <gasps> I'm going to the underground base. We're out of time. I know. You'll have to protect yourself now. Don't trust anyone. Yeah. If I can't stop Metal Gear, this whole place will probably be bombed to hell. Yeah. We might not meet again. I'll hang on to my codec. I want to keep helping. You can leave any time. Get a head start. A head start on your new life. Snake! What was she fighting for? What am I fighting for? What are you fighting for? If we make it through this, I'll tell you. Okay. I'll be searching too.
Your sea rations are frozen? Oh damn, I was muted all this time. frozen sea rats. It'll cause a temperature imbalance that'll drain your strength. Make sure you warm those seas before you eat them. Okay. Master, you and I, we're nothing more than dogs, are we? That's not like you, Snake. Don't let what Sniper Wolf said bother you. Listen, there's not a soldier alive that doesn't question himself. And if there is one, he's nothing more than a murderer. But someone like Wolf, a soldier who's looking for nothing more than their own death, is no good to anyone either. Once she started to look for death, it was all over. That's how you'll end up too, Snake. When the temperature falls down to minus 30 or minus 40 degrees Celsius, you start to get ice fogs. That's when the moisture in the air freezes. It may look pretty at first, but it'll severely limit your visibility. Be careful. Can you actually see ice fogs? I don't remember. Kipling, an English poet who also won the Nobel Prize, said that once you go beyond 65 degrees north, you're beyond the reach of divine protection and human law. To survive in such surroundings, you have to be strong enough to not rely on God or anyone else. Yeah, I believe if you aim for too long in here, you'll actually see a bit of ice fog, but not like, not much. It will not cover your sight completely. In cold like this, over 70% of your body's warmth is lost through your head. Put on some kind of hat. I hate hats. Is a bandana okay? Well, I guess it's better than nothing. Is a bandana okay? In an arctic environment, it's important to change your underwear if you're sweating a lot. Doddle around too much, and you'll not only waste your strength, but you could even catch pneumonia. Gaming after a bath should be avoided. <laughs> okay. Yeah, pneumonia actually is not, not great. I've had it once. Disgusting. It's easy to dehydrate in sub-zero climates, so make sure to replenish your fluids. But don't ever try to do it by eating snow. You'll freeze your stomach and your body temperature will drop. Always melt the snow and then boil it before you drink it. No cold foods or cold liquids for you. That stuff causes a temperature imbalance that actually drains your body of energy. A golden rule in arctic environments. They have a lot of calls in here, like Miller and uh, Natasha. In cold like this, over 70% of your body's warmth is lost through your head. Put on some kind of hat. Now he starts to repeat. As long as the strategy of nuclear deterrence continues, nuclear weapons may be reduced, but they will never be eliminated. If you think about it, nuclear reduction does not mean much without elimination as the ultimate goal. I used to work in the DIA. I figured the only way to achieve nuclear elimination was to work from the inside to convince them of the ineffectiveness of the deterrence theory. Seems like you're pretty focused on that issue. Victims of nuclear radiation are a sad thing to see, and I have seen a lot of it. I have seen more than enough of it. I was born and raised in Pripyat, Ukraine. I was 10 years old on that day, April 26, 1986. You don't mean... Yes, Chernobyl. That is the day that changed my life and thousands of other lives. I live just three kilometers north of there. 600,000 to 700,000 people were evacuated. Over 650,000 children suffered the effects of radiation poisoning. Between 1986 and 1993, 12,000 children died. My parents, 
and many others like them who helped in the cleanup died a few years later from radiation sickness. We must rid this world of all nuclear weapons before they cause more misery, before they destroy the delicate environment that keeps us alive. I will not allow this pain and anxiety to pass on to yet another generation. Hmm. I'm nuclear. I guess it's a reference to MGS5. Or I'm just we, the Phantom Pain. If we do not drastically reduce the number of stockpiled nuclear weapons, it is going to become easier and easier for terrorists to get their hands on them. That means more terrorist attacks like this one. There was some talk about both sides reducing their nuclear stockpiles to a core deterrent force of less than 500 missiles each and declaring that there would be no nuclear counterstrike in the event of the use of conventional or chemical weapons, but talks fell through. It seems that America is unwilling to relinquish its position as the most powerful country in the world. There is no doubt about it. After the Cold War ended, the chance of a full-scale, worldwide nuclear conflagration was diminished. But on the other hand, the chances of local tactical use of nuclear weapons greatly increased. Civil wars, revolutions, regional disputes. It seems like there is a new war popping up somewhere every day. And many of them are the result of centuries-old hatred between different ethnic or religious groups. These people do not think rationally or logically. In such conflicts, there is no concern for the high civilian casualty rate, and international criticism means little. A nuclear deterrent is meaningless because emotions run so hot. Furthermore, unlike strategic nuclear missiles, the decision to use tactical nuclear missiles is in some cases left up to battlefield commanders. It is pretty scary. As long as nuclear weapons continue to proliferate, the chances that someone is going to use them will also continue to grow. Ironically, the policy of nuclear deterrence has prevented the elimination of nuclear weapons. The entire basis for determining them to be illegal has been undermined by this military policy. In other words, Nuclear weapons cannot be declared illegal because we have an entrenched policy which makes them legal, ipso facto. America and Russia are not the only countries with nuclear weapons. During the Cold War, the UK, France, and China publicly declared the existence of their own nuclear arsenals. Since we entered the 21st century, we have confirmed the existence of nuclear weapons programs in countries throughout Africa, the Middle East, South America, and Asia. Nukes are steadily proliferating. The 21st century is paying for the 20th century's failure to plug the holes in the NPT and for the IAEA's failure to tighten nuclear control measures. Excuse me, smiley skirts. The IAEA was established in 1957 to oversee peaceful as well as military applications of atomic power. But the IAEA can only investigate those countries which request an investigation. Furthermore, the timing of the inspection must be approved by the country in question. They are not allowed to do sneak inspections. The country that is being investigated can even dictate the nationality of the inspectors that they will allow in. In the late 1970s, Iraq would only allow inspectors from Bulgaria and Russia to enter the country. The IAEA yeah. does not even have the authority to level fines against countries who have committed infractions. After the Gulf War, they discovered that Iraq had been developing nuclear weapons in secret, right under the investigators' noses. 
Unfortunately, as an organization, the IAEA just did not have the teeth to effectively stop the proliferation of nuclear weapons and technology. In 1970, all five nuclear powers, America, the Soviet Union, France, England, and China, signed the NPT. The treaty provided that the non-nuclear equipped countries could receive assistance for peaceful applications of nuclear power. But military applications of nuclear power were strictly prohibited, and the IAEA was given the responsibility of investigating countries who were suspected of being in non-compliance with the NPT. But the IAEA could not stop the proliferation of nuclear weapons either. Not only couldn't the IAEA levy any penalties against violating nations, but it became impossible to distinguish between technologies which would lead to military development and technologies which were for civilian applications. She keeps going. According to the military doctrine, which is the basis for NATO expansion, a preemptive nuclear strike may be undertaken if there is a sufficient threat of a regional conflict spreading to a large-scale war. In the face of all this NATO expansion, Russia might feel the need to flex their nuclear muscles, if only to show NATO that, even with their aging arsenal and diminished army, they are still a major power. Russia could no longer pay enough money to its leading scientists, so they sold their weapons and weapons technology to the highest bidders. NBC weapons flowed into the hands of dictators and terrorists. The military balance of the world crumbled. The world has never seen the balance of power shift so quickly and dramatically. It is so ironic. People are working as slaves to pay for weapons that must never be used. Weapons that target the people themselves. It is madness! Yes. In the 20th century, in order to be a military superpower, you had to first be an economic superpower. But things changed toward the end of the century, after the collapse of communism. With all the surplus weapons and technology floating around, even economically weak countries could have a powerful military. Russia could no longer pay enough money all right, to... she starts to repeat herself. No cold foods or cold liquids. Right, same for Miller. Snake, look at your sea rations. They're frozen. You can't use frozen sea rats. Until they defrost, you won't be able to replenish your energy. Be very careful. They'll defrost in a warm place. Probably just your bare skin would be fine. Right, that's an actual mechanic. If our rations are frozen, we can't use them. Sad story. We shouldn't have turned our backs on the Kurds after the Gulf War. Listen, we're not responsible for her choices. Everyone decides their own fate, no matter where they were born. Words like fate, karma, it's just an excuse for giving up if you ask me. I don't agree with you. Maybe if she hadn't been born on a battlefield, she might have had a happier, more fulfilling life. She might not have turned into a killer. Snake, hurry up and get to Metal Gear's underground base. The entrance should be towards the back of the snowfield. The entrance to the underground maintenance base. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's time to go. It's this too, I believe. Yeah. Third disc too. Let's see if I can do that. Uh, I don't see it. 
I'll change discs right here. Okay. I think we're good. <laughs> 